Hello, in today's video I try my hand at heavily chipping and weathering a steel door, make and break some concrete slabs, all in the effort of making a post-apocalyptic survival colony. But before all that, we need to go back to the beginning. I started off by tackling the largest portion of this build, which was going to be a hardened aircraft shelter, or simply put, a bunker for an aircraft. I wanted to tackle the concrete structure on the outside, so I used a piece of XPS foam and I scribed in some lines a lot of the references I had showed a lot of concrete blocks that were stacked, and I wanted to recreate that. With the lines now scribed, I then scored them using a hobby knife, and then widened them using a plastic scraper. Moving on from there, I wanted to make some concrete slabs for the ground. I had stumbled upon this really cool tutorial from Jeff Wrighton about how to make some really realistic concrete slabs, and I wanted to give it a try myself, so I went about following his recipe. A quick rundown is just some plaster of Paris, some grout, a little bit of concrete powder, and some dirt for some extra texture. Bonus for the concrete and grout is it also adds color, but you can also add any kind of color you want to this mixture as well. Threw together a styrene form so I could pour in the mixture. Now with the concrete applied, I laid some tool fabric into the mixture to give it some rigidity, because otherwise if it just crumbles, it's just gonna break apart. This actually will hold it all together. I then set it aside to dry for a couple of hours. Now dry, I started to realize that this stuff might've been a little too thin. So next time I'm gonna make the form just a little bit thicker by adding some extra styrene. I feel like there's certain brands of toilet paper that's actually thicker than this. With the slabs now demolded, I started the cracking process, which is just gently rolling these over a round object, just to give it some backing. And then to further refine the cracks, I used a toothbrush to gently rub them to soften the edges. You can also brush the surface to pull some of that aggregate up so it doesn't look so smooth. After whipping up a whole bunch of those, I then applied the ground texture, which is just my standard mixture at this point, then placed the concrete slabs in the ground texture just to sink them in a little bit better, have it all stick together while it was all wet. With the groundwork now drying, I moved on to scratch building the hangar door I started with a rough shape and decided I wanted to scribe in some lines. Ultimately, not liking the way it was turning out, I then pivoted. Grading my styrene stash, I decided to go back and raise the features off the door instead of recessing them. With the major features in place, I then went about cutting and adding little bolts and rivets, much like I did in my last diorama with the sub pen door. and finished it off with a quick coat of primer. I wanted to weather this door using the chipping fluid method, so I needed a nice rusty base coat. I mixed up some whole red and some flat yellow from Tamiya. With the base coat down, I wanted to add a little bit of variation for some lighter rust tone, so I kept adding more and more yellow as I went. After applying all of the rust tones, I then covered it in chipping fluid off camera, followed it up with a coat of green mixed from IJN Cockpit Green and NATO Green, both from Tamiya. To further push the contrast a little bit, I added more and more IJN Green as I went here and there just for more post shading. With the paintwork done and dry, I moved on to chipping. The cool thing about chipping fluid is it's water activated, so I just took a wet brush and I just started scrubbing. At first I used this small leftover paintbrush I had, but then I moved on to using a toothbrush, which I was far happier with. If you wanted something a little bit more subtle, not the way to go about it, but for this kind of surface area, it really did the work. I continued adding water as I went. It helped to clean and remove some of the old paint residue. I don't think I'm going to do that in the future, but maybe just use a wet towel to damp it away. This is the first time I've ever used it. I kind of went a little crazy. I can totally see if you take a more refined approach, you can get some amazing results. I was ultimately looking for something super weathered and decayed anyway, so 
pretty happy with the way it came out. And I'm definitely going to try to use it in my future projects. I went back and applied a second coat of chipping fluid, created a little paper template so I could airbrush on a number, only then to have my hand cover up the entire painting process. Good job, me. After removing the paper template, I realized there was a little bit of overspray, which is actually pretty okay to clean up since we had the chipping fluid anyways, just use a little bit of water and since it was such a small amount of overspray, it washed up real well. And then I moved on to chipping the number itself. I followed this up with using some enamels. For the number, I just covered it in some streaking rust. Towards the bottom of the hangar door, I used some Earth Effects by AK. Finishing it off with some oil paints. In this case, burnt umber. With the hangar door now finished, I moved on to applying the dirt texture to the ground so I could apply the static grass. If you want to know how I did the dirt texture and the groundwork and apply most of my static grass more thoroughly, check out one of my other videos that I'll link below. Wait until the end of this video to go check those out. But for the absolute speed run of an explanation, PVA glue applied to the surface, dust it on with a paint can laid in a stocking, apply PVA glue to the surface, use the static grass applicator, shake it on, cover it until your heart's content. And I find it works better to work in small areas and build up the effect gradually over time. I'm still running a little bit low on my primer, so I decided to prime only the grass. For the grass color, I made a mixture between deep green and flat yellow, to which I then progressively added more and more yellow for the highlights. But if you like the color of your, your own static grass, painting it is absolutely not necessary. I highlighted the natural dirt color with a little bit of buff from Tamiya. With the grass and the dirt now taken care of, we can now move on to painting the concrete slabs. Whenever you paint static grass, you're always gonna get a ridiculous amount of overspray onto everything. So I usually like to tackle it first. For the slabs themselves, I just used Tamiya deck tan and I added a few drops here and there of earthy colors or some darker colors, just to vary up each slab slightly. And now to further refine the concrete and differentiate them from each other a little bit, I made some acrylic washes using some earthy colors just to help imply some of the dirt and shadows and really bring out all of those cracks and crevices we worked so hard to create. Followed up the acrylic washes with a last second addition of wanting a stripe or a taxiway marker. So I masked it off, gave it a white base coat, followed that up with yellow and finished it off with black. And off camera, I repeated the same washes over it to help blend it in and fade it out a little bit more. Following up those acrylic washes with enamel washes to help push that contrast and to really make those cracks pop. I did some work texturing the concrete structure for the aircraft hangar. I just used an aluminum foil ball and gently rolled it over the foam. Careful to not press too hard because I want it to read more like concrete than stone. Give it a quick coat of primer. I ended up painting it the exact same way I painted the other concrete just so it would match. So a quick coat of Tamiya deck tan, followed up with some acrylic washes for variation and to bring out the details and the dark cracks. Finished with some oils to bring out some of more of the dirt and weathering. Early on in the project, I decided I wanted to have a farm in the corner of this diorama. So I used some paint brushes to create some vegetation kind of looks like wheat, so it's wheat. Moving on from there, I knew I wanted to have a cordoned off area that was protecting like the inner compound. And when I was using that tool fabric, I noticed how it looked very similar to a chain link fence. I took some styrene dowels, cut them to length and glued them in place as uprights for the fence. Using that same styrene and tool fabric, I created some frames for the gates to enter the compound. With the gate now sorted, I went and applied the tool fabric to the upright that I had just glued in. I cut them to length and used an excessive amount of PVA glue to hold them in place while I trimmed the top flush. Whenever I make another fence again, I'm definitely gonna have to figure out a different way of gluing them to the styrene uprights. 
let's just say that excessive PVA glue is no bueno. With the courtyard now secure, I printed off and painted some figures. I still have a long way to come when it goes to my figure painting skills, but I feel like I'm improving. And the only way to further improve is to keep going. I also printed a bunch of details along with the figures and painted those up off screen and added them here and there. I for one don't believe you need to strictly have figures to make it a diorama. It is hard to disagree with the fact that figures along with the small little details really do bring a scene together and really bring it to life. Speaking of details, I threw together that watchtower and cranked out a whole bunch of sandbags using some air drying clay, gave it a quick and dirty paint job with a simple little wash to dirty them up a little bit. Finished off the groundwork with some flowers and some vegetation spread around. And with that done, I gave it a coat of black paint, and then I call this one good. I wasn't sure whether or not I wanted to add zombies to this. I kind of wanted to leave it a little bit ambiguous, but I felt it was too ambiguous without them. So I threw those in at the very last second. But yeah, another one done. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you really like what you saw and you want to see more, click here. Thank you guys for making this year a really cool year. Hope everyone enjoys Christmas, enjoys New Year's, whatever it is you end up doing. I was thinking about doing a year in review kind of video. If you guys are interested in that, let me know in the bottom. But yeah, that's it for me. Have a good one, guys. I'll catch you next time.